Welcome to part 3 of Fainting in Front of Your Team. Today's team is Seijo or Araba Josei and the setter of course is Aikawa. I'm really excited for this one and you all seem to love this series like oh my god I'm so excited for this. So I hope you will like this part. Um, many of you in the vote said that this team is supposed to be next. I will leave another poll to vote on in the community post so vote who's going next and now let's go. Kendaichi! He set the ball toward the spiker who awaited it and made a near flawless attack, spiking it deep into the heart of their opponent's court. Watari, however, playing against them today, was prepared and received it. It flew high up in the air, only a bit off from Yahaba's position, who adjusted and set it towards Kunimi. Aikawa observed them closely, a smile playing on his lips. Passing to Kunimi at this point in the game wasn't smart. It was early and he could see the tiredness still reflected in his eyes. He still played well, his attack wasn't easy to receive, but it was nowhere close to what he could do if he was thoroughly warmed up and focused on the game. He was confident Yahaba would make a great setter for the team the longer he played with them. In official games, he wasn't often on the court so far unless Oikawa got injured, but next year he'd be their regular setter. By then, it was important to learn about their spiker's individual abilities and quirks. Kunimi's attack was strong nonetheless. A certain sense of pride surged through him as he observed his teammates. They had all become extraordinary players, sharpening their skills and senses and they trusted him. On the court, the odd distance between them seemed to grow much smaller. If he could, he would capture that moment forever. It was as if time was slowing down as he observed the harmony their play created. Even in training, and not utterly perfect since their team was split into two, to him it was beautiful, a safe haven. Watari was in the air, setting the ball toward Mad Dog on the outer side of the court. The spiker launched with the fierce precision of a bloodhound after it into the air, finding his target effortlessly, his eyes zeroing in on it as the block rose before him, a wall he was determined to break. Everyone was in motion, repositioning themselves on the court as a reaction to the players around them, teammates as well as opponents. They adjusted their stance and focus on whatever could happen next, relying on their setup to guide them forward. It was what volleyball should A sudden pain, intense enough to make the area feel numb at first, before bursting into alternating hot and ice-cold flames licking over his skin exploded at the side of his head. It was followed by small jolts of pain surging through his head as he attempted to process the sensation. He barely felt himself stumble over or the tears reflexively spilling from his eyes, but suddenly his hands collided with the wooden floor in a forgotten reflex, keeping him from tipping over. His other instinctively reached for his face, where the throbbing was the most intense, feeling for the injured area and, a little too late, covering his eyes that were quickly coating the skin in tears. Shock washed in waves through his system and the arm he used to hold himself up broke away beneath him, making him fall forward and onto his side. He was shaking slightly and every attempt of opening his eyes failed. It wasn't that his eyelids were too heavy as though consciousness was fading, it was as though his reflexes wouldn't allow it. With every wave of pain, new tears formed, making him blink rapidly while urging him to keep his eyes shut. His breathing turned shallow. He had gotten his fair share of injuries over the time, considering he trained a lot and strived to be a professional athlete. But he had never taken such a direct hit to the face, at least not recently, when his opponents and teammates had become a lot stronger as well. Why did it have to be Mad Dog? 
An involuntary groan, almost more of a whimper, escaped his lips. He hoped it was just the shock and pain keeping his muscles locked, paralyzing him. A concussion was the last thing he wanted. He would be mad at him. The thought of the grumpy ace almost made him smile and brought him back to a suddenly increasing buzz of voices swelling around him to a unified, illegible mass of sound. It was almost suffocating, adding to the throbbing in his head, and it brought forth what he'd nearly forgotten, the challenge. How ironic that it would start like this. He meant to worry his teammates a bit, if they even would, but never intended to make it this realistic. Still... It was nice relaxing his muscles against the cool gym floor, letting the tears spill instead of fighting them, and allowing their words to morph into an illegible jumble of sounds like a distant crowd. It was soothing. He gave up on attempting to understand their words and simply basked in their vicinity in what hoped was concern for him and not mockery. Iwazumi didn't see what happened, only heard it. An ugly sound that shouldn't have been there in the first place. It sounded nothing like the clean, precise receive they grew to expect of Aikawa. Their captain might be a setter, but he was well versed in all necessary volleyball techniques and should at least be in the position to get to the ball, but no. This sounded utterly different. It was soon followed by the sound of the ball bouncing on the hard gym floor to this side. They had lost the point. Before Iwazumi could turn around to assess the reason behind their failed play, a thought echoed through the gym halls and he could see their opponents on the other side of the court freeze. It looked as though they were uncertain about how to react at first, as though no one accounted for this possibility. Slowly, he turned around, unsure what to expect, but this... This wasn't it. Aikawa! For a moment, the connection to his muscles seemed severed as he urged them to move, but they refused to acknowledge his place. The setter sat hunched over on the ground, holding himself up with one arm and covering his face with the other. Nonetheless, Ivo was certain that tears were falling from his face. His last bits of rational thought diminished when the whimper echoed in the suddenly, almost eerily silent hall. Kawa! He stormed toward the sudden now cowering on the ground. The silence came to a sudden halt as chaos broke loose. What happened? I think he took Kiyotani's attack straight to the face. <laughs> Damn. A slightly amused undertone mixed with Maki's words, yet it was overshadowed by worry. Gotta give you that, your attack is quite powerful if it can knock out hit. His sentence cut off, probably being nudged in the side by Madsen. Aikawa, are you okay? Iwazumi knelt down by his side, his own chance shaking as he wasn't sure whether he should touch the trembling setter or not when suddenly, he went almost still. <laughs> Did he faint? Hey, wake up! Kawa, wake up! He shook him slightly, ignoring the growing unrest around him. Well done, Mad Dog. I know you didn't like him, but damn. Monkey tried making light of the situation, but his voice wavered. 
Kiyotani was visibly taken aback, and although he looked like he wanted to snap back at him, he didn't. He couldn't. His eyes were glued to the unconscious setter on the ground. Stop it, Hanamaki. It's not his fault. He attacked as he should. It was an accident. Yahaba positioned himself in front of the older and between him and the spiker. It was the first time Iwazumi had seen him talk to a third year like that, but he didn't have the time to worry about that now. Oikawa, wake up! Just screaming at him probably wouldn't do much, and as an athlete, he should know better, but at the moment his mind seemed wiped clean of any actual useful knowledge. Even worse, the coach wasn't here today, leaving the responsibility in their hands alone. Madsen, could you... Oikawa stirred next to him, a quiet groan slipped from his lips, and he tried to fight himself up from the ground. Instinctively, Iwazumi reached out to stabilize him. Careful, take it slow. His words were hushed, but determined. The setter looked up at him, and Iwa's heart clenched as he saw the deep hazel eyes covered by a thin veil of tears and looking at him so intensely as though the taller tried to read his very thoughts. Can you stand up? Aikawa nodded slowly, yet his face twisted a little in pain when he did. The ace waved Matsukawa over again. Here, help me stabilize him and get him off the court. Aikawa chuckled. And here I thought you were so strong, Iwachan. Put those beefy arms to use. I bet you could carry me bridal style. He teased, leaning onto the smaller with almost his entire weight. And here I thought you knew how to receive. Looks like we both were wrong. Mean Iwachan. They sat down by the wall and Iwa made sure Aikawa leaned against it, secure from falling should he faint again. Do you need anything else? Yeah, maybe some water. I'll... Here. Yahaba jumped to the side, a bottle in hand, and gave it to the ace swiftly. Thanks. When he turned around to urge the captain to drink, his face was scrunched up in pain again and he half-heartedly covered his ears. Maybe it's best if we go outside. I think it's a bit too loud in here. You go and continue practice without us. I'll stay with him. They nodded and helped Aikawa to his feet again. While Matsun and Maki turned around again and headed for the court, Yahaba hesitated. Iwazumi senpai? Kiyotani didn't mean it. He feels sorry for what happened. His gaze wandered over to the aggressive spiker briefly. He refused to acknowledge their existence. Yet his hands were clenched into fists. It wasn't his fault, just like he said. Make sure he doesn't beat himself up over this, yeah? Yahaba nodded and quickly followed the others. They sat on a bench near the gym, leaning against the wall behind it. Slowly, Aikawa got better if the smirk spreading on his face was an indicator of anything. Were you worried about me, Iwachan? The ace rolled his eyes. Of course I was. You usually don't suck that much when playing volleyball out of all things. Man, I'm injured. 
erasing his side and looked at him exasperated but with a hint of worry still reflected in his eyes. But seriously, Kawa, what was wrong with you today? You never get distracted like that while playing. Nasada sighed but smiled. Our team is pretty great, don't you think, Iwachin? What? I'm just saying, I think when we leave, they'll be fine without us. We did a pretty awesome job. He smiled brightly. It was genuine, bittersweet, accompanied by the tears in his eyes. Yeah, we did. Do you think always will separate after graduation? The ace looked at him and gulped before nodding slowly. I think our goals in life are just a little different, but maybe that's enough already. Aikawa looked at him like he was deep in thought, contemplating his options. Well, last chance then. Last chance for what? His thoughts stopped. Suddenly, he was engulfed by warmth. A warm hand cupped his cheek, while another grabbed his shirt and pulled him closer. What caused his brain to malfunction was a pair of lips pressed tightly onto his own. They were soft warm and tasted almost sweet as he instinctively traced the tip of his tongue over them, mapping out their shape. The setter took it as an invitation to deepen the kiss, and in his current state, Iwazumi had no objections. The opposite, actually, as he set up to gain momentum and took control. It felt incredible to be this close to the other. For a second, he forgot about everything around him. He didn't hesitate to ask himself what this meant for the past as well as moving on forward. He didn't hesitate to assess the consequences of his actions. He just wanted this. Something until now he never dared to consider too closely that turned out to feel so much better than he could ever have imagined. The blissful bubble burst when Aikawa separated them, a little out of breath, but determined. And suddenly, reality crushed onto him. His cheeks felt unnaturally hot and he tried to jump back but was held in place by Aikawa, who had caught his wrist between his fingers. If I had known that you'd react like this, I would have done it much sooner. He grinned, and although Iwazumi would love to snap back at him, he couldn't. His brain tried in vain to assess what happened and whether it had been a mistake. I... I'm sorry. Ankyo raised an eyebrow and laughed. <laughs> You're so silly, Iwachan. And just like that, his lips found Iwazumi's again. Thank you all so much for watching to the end. I hope you like this third part of the series and yeah, there is more to come. To be exact, I plan four more parts and maybe some bonus parts. If you like to consider leaving a like because it really helps the channel grow and consider subscribing so you won't miss out on the future parts. Now, tell me in the comments what was your favorite, absolute favorite quote from this video and vote on the community post if you want to decide which team shall be next in this challenge. And now, I hope you have a wonderful and amazing day because you are amazing and you deserve it.